Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie Flip, uh, back again with another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to link your PlayStation 4 to your PC so that you don't need a capture card in order to stream your, um, your console play uh, through your PC. So, uh, as you can see, I have the program up and running already. It's called PS4 Remote Play, this nifty little app right up here, uh, program right up here. Uh, it allows you to connect to your PlayStation 4 and play uh, remotely. However, uh, I did find that there is quite a bit of, uh, of latency and lag um, if you don't set up the, uh, the uh, settings properly. So we're going to go right into uh, how to install this program and how to get the, the least latency uh, as possible. So the first thing that you're going to do uh, to, to, to start this process is go into your PlayStation account and what you need to do is connect your, uh, your PlayStation uh, through the network settings. You need to go to the DNS uh, uh, settings for your internet. Um, you clicked, uh, let's see, set up internet connection. Uh, I cannot do this while I'm in remote play. Damn, that sucks. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, huh. Okay, well, we can see it here. So when you go into uh, set up your network connection, you're gonna wanna set up a new connection, whether it's Wi-Fi or whether you're plugged directly into the network, um, you're gonna go in here and click set up network connection, internet connection, and instead of uh, applying uh, all the settings automatically, what you're going to do is click the manual option, and you're going to wanna click on the, uh, the Everything else is going to be set automatically except for the DNS server settings. And what you want to do uh, is go in and change, oops, sorry, go in and change the, uh, the connection settings so that your primary DNS uh, right here, this uh, primary DNS and the secondary DNS uh, will be changed to the Google DNS uh, server settings, which is what you see here on the screen. It's going to be 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8, uh, for the primary DNS and the secondary DNS you're going to change to 8.8.4.4. Um, once you're done, finish the, the network setup. You shouldn't have any other issues. And what this is going to do, this is the first step in getting as little latency as possible uh, when you're connecting to your PlayStation 4 through your wireless network. So what you're doing is you're, you're connecting to the Google's uh, server so that when your PlayStation does a DNS query, uh, it doesn't take as long for you to load the content or, or finish that query. Uh, when you're connected to your ISP's regular DNS settings, which is what it's going to set to automatically, uh, I do notice that you tend to have a lot of latency between what's going on on the PlayStation screen and what you're seeing through the PlayStation 4 Remote Play uh, program. Uh, the next step after you've finished this is you're going to go and create a second PlayStation uh, account. And there's, there's a reason for this because whenever you connect to PlayStation 4 Remote Play through your main account, it switches the controller from your PlayStation to your PC. And what you want is you want the controller to stay connected to your PlayStation 4 uh, so that you get as little uh, latency as possible when you're playing the game. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is go to playstationnetwork.com uh, I'll create I'll, I'll put a link down in the description below uh, so that you can access this page easily you're just gonna go to playstationnetwork.com or Sony Entertainment Network.com and create a new dummy account you know just create an account create a, a, a BS email or something like that um, and then uh, what you want to do is log into that account on your PS4 and and link it to your ps4 once you've linked it to your ps4 you can then go to the uh the remote play download page and download playstation 4 remote play you're going to click on what operating system you have windows or mac if you download the windows version it's going to download it's going to take you down below here uh it's going to tell you that you need a usb controller and a bunch of other information um you know uh so 
what you're going to do is go down to here and click on in initial setup. So you're going to click Windows PC. You're going to download the Remote Play installer uh, and the executable file is going to show up here in the bottom left hand corner. You're going to click on the, uh, the executable file and install it at, at normal. I'm not going to reinstall this because I'm using it right now. Um, but this is pretty much standard for any anything you install on Windows. Just click the next button and follow the steps and where you want to install um, your PS4 Remote Play program. Um, I'm going to cancel out of this. Once you're done installing it, um, yes, we're going to exit out of that, uh, close it, whatever. Um, you're then going to have a PS4 Remote Play. We're going to close out of this just to show you guys a PS4 Remote Play uh, uh, icon on your desktop. What you're going to do is you're going to click on that icon. Go away, AVG. Um, you're going to double click on that icon and it's going to open a page that looks very similar to this. It's going to look identical to this. Or it's going to take you to directly to the settings where it's going to ask you to log in. So I'm going to show you guys that. You're going to go to where it says PlayStation Network and click sign in. And you're going to sign into your secondary account. Now, I don't know if that signed me out of my secondary account or not, but we're going to try to connect to it right now and see what happens. You want to sign into the secondary account because what this is going to allow your computer to do is it's going to view the PlayStation while you're still logged into your main account on your PlayStation 4. This will decrease the latency drastically and you'll get the best quality video if you set it up just like I explained this to you guys. So uh, that being said, let's click OK and then let's click start. If I did this correctly, then it won't log me out of this account. So it does look like it logged me into my secondary account um, and I can still control everything from my controller from the PS4 from my main account. I am still on my Matty Flip main account. I can't switch profiles or show you guys that I'm switching profiles, um, you know, from the PlayStation Remote Play app. I'll, I'll even show you if I go to uh, power and go to switch user. It says you cannot do this while you're using Remote Play. So, um, but if you've done this correctly and you're logged into your secondary account, that's what the what you will receive as a message when you try to do this. Uh, make sure that you have two accounts on your PlayStation account. You don't have to do anything with the secondary account or create a profile or anything. It just needs to be there for you to access it. Once you've done this, you'll then be able to uh, play your PlayStation games without any latency. I'll just knock that off my desk. You'll be able to play your PlayStation games without any latency. Uh, and you can then broadcast your console play through OBS like I am right now. And I'm showing you guys um, my desktop. This is the actual PS4 remote play. Um, I'm loading up Rocket League as we speak. And there's going to be very little latency uh, between what I'm doing on the controller and what's going on on the screen. Actually, it's almost zero latency. I have not noticed any any latency since I've changed the settings like this and I've, I've set it up this way. Um, I hope this explains a lot. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or if you have any suggestions or you want more detail on how to do this kind of stuff, I, I, I can film a video of my computer screen instead of capturing the desktop uh, or filming my, my PlayStation screen. I have another monitor over here. Um, so that you guys can actually see how to set up the DNS settings and everything like that um, if you're not familiar with how to do that already. Uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Here's a little bit of gameplay just to show you guys how quick the, the reaction time is. Um, there's maybe like a half, not even like a quarter of a, a fraction of a second delay on me moving the camera here. Um, I can't show it to you side by side right now. Um, but uh, I, I may make a secondary video where I actually film the two monitors next to each other and you guys can see uh, the latency or the lag between the console and the PC. It's very, very minimal and it definitely helps with your streaming experience if you don't want to stream to whatever platform you stream to, whether it be YouTube, you know, uh, Twitch, Mixer, uh, and you want to just capture your gameplay on your PC and stream it through OBS, this is the best way to do it so that you have as little latency as possible and your reactions uh, with your, your, your camera uh, will fall 
fall into sync with what's going on in the game at the same time, and your 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 viewers won't notice uh, a huge uh, latent uh, latency or lag between your reactions and maybe you scoring a goal in the game or getting a kill in the game. Uh, so you know everything will sync up properly. Uh, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, until next time, <laughs> here's some gameplay for you guys.